All right, y'all. I got another foot for you today. This is the fringe looper foot. Have you ever heard of a fringe looper foot? Have you ever wanted to try a new decorative touch for your items? I have the fringe looper foot and I'm gonna show you how to use it. Come on down, Nancy. No? You don't wanna do it? I will do the disco. Whatever, I'll dance by myself. It's a party. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so welcome to my fringe looper foot party. This is the fringe looper foot. Essentially, you would use a zigzag stitch and it goes over this little bar here, which creates an excess of thread. So as you zigzag along, it leaves the excess of thread and little loops uh, that end up on the top side of your fabric. Let's see how this looks. Installing this foot is quite easy. It's a snap-on foot, so just like all of the ones that come with your machine, you just snap it right on. Boom, that is done. Okay, so once you have your foot on your machine, you can put your tension down low. I have mine on about a one. I have my stitch width on a 6.0 and my stitch length is on a 0.6, okay? Now, you wanna have a, f a thread color that you really want to show on the top of your fabric. I have black just so that you can see it. When you feed your fabric in, remember that it's going to zigzag over wherever you draw a line. See, oh, I didn't show you. I made a heart, and I'm gonna go ahead and zigzag over that heart so you can see what it looks like when I do this. Okay, lined up. Go ahead and backstitch. Okay, and let's go. I have this beautiful heart made of loops that I could totally put on any of my makes. Tell me that is not the cutest thing that you can do all by yourself with your sewing machine. What? Yes, I am stoked about this. Now you can see that you can do some decorative touches with just your sewing machine. Even if you don't have a bunch of fancy stitches, Look, I did that with just my zigzag stitch and a fringe foot, the fringe foot. It's gonna be all the rage, watch. You all are gonna be putting all the designs on your items and we're so excited at Ellie and Mac to see what you do with this tutorial. Have a nice day, bye. Welcome back friends. This is Dahlia and I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. And today, we're gonna to teach you how to make crowns. a lace crown for you and maybe your littles. Yay. Come on, let's go. In order to make your crown, this is what you're gonna need. Some horsehair braid, some three to three and a half inch lace, scissors, measuring tape, stiff and quick, or Mod Podge, whichever you prefer, and some sort of plastic bowl to use as a mold. First, you wanna measure the circumference of the person's head who's going to be wearing it. Then, you wanna cut a piece of lace, 
and a piece of horsehair braid that will match that circumference. You want to be able to overlap by a quarter to half an inch. Okay, now I'm just going to videotape the sewing part. So um, I don't need you for that part if you don't want to sit here. I do. Okay. Me too. Okay. So then you're going to need your sewing machine. I will have mine on a zigzag stitch. use a universal needle for this it's not gonna make much of a difference so but for this I will put my <clears throat> stitch width on three and length on 5.0 make sure that you put your horse hair braid to the back side of your lace. If you put it to the front side, then the shiny side that's gonna be out is gonna show horsehair braid. Now this is just gonna to be to stabilize the lace. So <clears throat> you will want to take the horsehair braid and clip it to your, or pin it to your lace so that it doesn't move when you're sewing. Clippity clip. Clip. These big clips are pretty awesome for that. Wonder clips. Oh, I don't have any more big ones. Okay, we're gonna have to use a little, little, little one right here. A little one. Okay, so now if you can see, my horsehair braid goes from here to here. What you want to do is you want to sew a zigzag here in the bottom and one parallel to it at the top of your horsehair braid to keep your horsehair braid on your lace. Ready, Dolly? Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take these clips, love. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the top. See? Now that you have your horsehair braid on there, you'll see it's a little bit more sturdy than it was without. Check it on here. Let's see. Overlap it. Now, you want to make sure that you overlap it where you'd like it to be. And don't worry about, you know, what it looks like where you overlap it. It's not really going to make a huge difference. Honestly, with the lace, nobody's going to see it. So, overlap it. You can see that we sort of semi have this together. Now all we're gonna have to do is 
put it on the mold. And I like to put it upside down just because it helps these, uh, these pieces that are sticking up to stay down. Do you see how perfect it fits on there? Just like that. And now we're just gonna spray it with Fabric Stiffen. I'm gonna use my secret hair straightening weapon, my hair dryer, to dry it uh, because otherwise it's gonna take all day long. I don't have all day. Do you got all day, Dahlia? No, we don't. I'm not gonna use it right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, we're gonna spray it with the fabric stiffen. We're gonna dry it. It may take two, three, four layers. I know I've already done this one at least three times. Um, before it actually wanted to stay up a little bit. So we'll do it a few times, we'll spray it down, and then all we have to do is decorate it. Yay! We'll show you what we got when we're done. See you later. Bye. <laughs> and here it is all nice and dry and ready for decoration. You can use a paintbrush and Mod Podge, but remember that the liquid in the Mod Podge may cause your crown to temporarily be a little less rigid than you'd like. You can use adhesive craft bond, which is what I'm gonna use here. Basically, I'm just gonna spray it and sprinkle on some glitter. That's gonna be kind of my thing thing because I like glitter. Uh, the glue is a little messy. You're gonna wanna use something to protect your table and also you're gonna want some ventilation in the area. I think after about two minutes of spraying this stuff, everybody in the house was tasting glue. That's probably not going to make me mom of the year. I'm just saying. So just kind of liberally spray and sprinkle, spray and sprinkle, spray and sprinkle. It's going to take a while because if you want the glitter super thick and to cover every thread of the lace, you're going to have to keep going over it a couple of times. I actually did this once and I intend to do it again, but I'm still waiting for it to dry. So watching me here doing this several times, you kind of get the gist, right? Yeah. Enjoy crafting your own. Bye.